All right, where we left off with digital painting is we discussed the different ways you can build up your sketch layer. And one is to do linear sketches, kind of analyzing the shapes, the joints, the form, the silhouette. We even put the photo reference behind our image. And you can kind of trace on top of it. But I don't want you to just just start tracing on top because that kind of limits the way your image is going to look and can often make it look really stiff and just not very uh, expressive. And this is your digital painting. It's not trying to match a photo. The other way is to just build up with regular brushes at pretty much full opacity and just fill in the shape like we did here. And so we have kind of a mix of both. I always like to do a linear sketch first because it helps me know what to look for and loosens me up. It's kind of a nice warm up before I do the, uh, the full base color painting. Now this base color painting is incredibly loose and there's a lot of kind of just free floating shapes. It's always using a standard brush. So if you go to your brush tools, you'll see in photo P, you can set the size, you can set the hardness. I was doing a large size with, I think, just a slightly softened hard edge. And I was doing it at 100%. And then I'm using the option key to steal color. So you see it changes from my brush. I'm on purple right now. Option key changes it to little crosshairs and I can steal a color like from inside the ear and then it changed to orange. Make my brush a little bit smaller here. Now I can keep building this, but I think at this point what I want to do is consolidate my layers a little bit. You don't need to erase anything in digital painting, but you can put things into folders. So I'm going to put all my reference sketches into a folder. I'm going to try anyway. There we go. Then I'm just going to turn that folder off. I have my references in another folder. I'm going to keep those on. I have a gray background and a white background. It's very important I'm not painting on the backgrounds. So I am going to lock both of those with the padlock. And now I'm going to call this my simple base color. It's different than local color for digital coloring. You can see the colors are over the place. But now I want to do the actual base color. Now for this, I already know I filled everything in at 100%. So I've got it covered. Now I can go to a lower opacity brush. I'm going to go about 70%. And I'm going to zoom in, just use Command Plus. And I'm going to be looking at my reference. And this time, when I use my brush at 70%, even though it's the same basic brush, I'm going to start shaping it a little bit more. And I need to set it to be pressure sensitive to size. That makes a big difference. And now I can start like really defining it. You can think of this as refined painting, but until I customize my brush, I really just still think of this as base painting. I'm just trying to fill in the entirety of the form with pixels. But now these pixels are going to get a little bit more refined. This is where I can put in some crazier color. I can steal it from my different references. Some of these purples are fun. These pinks. These greens and cyans. I'm 
and the lighter colors as well. I try not to ever paint with pure white or pure black. I always try to mix it. And what's nice about being at 70% is even when I go on top of the pink with the purple, it's the purple mixing with the pink. And it's giving me a new color at 70%, you know, each time I do that. Especially for doing something like a hairy animal, the more I mix these colors, the better. Because I get more and more texture. Instead of it looking like this, it starts to look more and more like this, where the colors are layering up on top of each other in the direction that I want. The key is to kind of move fairly quickly. I can even add little highlights like on the nose. And to just have a lot of energy at this stage in the painting. Even if you're just still kind of finding your way. The more practice you have with drawing and painting, the more this will feel comfortable to you. But bit digital has a whole lot of benefits. Like you can always completely replace. We can do it on different layers. You're not locked into anything. And there's no great, you know, advantage to using tons of colors or using fewer colors. What really matters is the lights and darks that you're putting down and the edges you're choosing. That's what actually will sell the illusion of three dimensions in your work. And again, we can stylize these digital paintings any way we like. You can set your brush to have smoothing on as well. I don't like to do that for digital painting. Remember, that was extremely helpful when we were doing digital inking for our spot illustrations. Can be helpful for digital coloring. But when you put turn smoothing on, especially at the resolutions we're working at, it can just kind of s grind the freeware to slowing down. And that's not as important. I don't need such smooth lines for this. What I need is the computer to be incredibly responsive to me. You can always hit Command Z. And basically, I just want to use this brush for this layer, just this standard brush, and just have my finger hover over option so I can change brushes, or not change brushes, sorry, change color whenever I need to. And because it's at 70% opacity, every time I paint over something with a new color, it's creating new colors in overlaps that I can then steal from or I can steal from my reference. I don't want you to be afraid of color. It's not the scariest thing. It's not if you get the colors right. It's if you get the values right that matters. The values are the grays, like the relative lights and darks of the image. And you'll notice I'm not zooming in on my reference or zooming in on my painting too much. I'm not even viewing it at 100% yet. That's because it's better to work with kind of bigger shapes faster than it is to zoom in on details at this stage. We want to cover a lot of it right now.
I am starting with the face because that is the focal point and that's going to kind of set the tone for the rest. That's often true with portraits. I'd say it's true with animals as well. But then the big challenge today as we're doing more and more refined painting is finding ways to, to bring a finish to everything. So we're not only focusing on the parts that are the most interesting, the most compelling. We're trying to bring the same level of attention to every part of it. That can be tough, but we'll get there. I know it's tough for me. And even though there are these kind of dark colors that I'm using, and it feels like I'm just drawing and outlining like around the ears where there's kind of a dark shade. This is not digital coloring. This is everything gets turned into shapes. And the shapes have two sides. Sometimes those sides can be softer. Sometimes they can be harder. We're going to learn about the smudge tool and other ways we can, in raster programs, modify our pixels after we put them down. But right now, I'm just trying to get a lot of those pixels down. And you can build this in as many layers as you want. And at any time, you can kind of check if your painting is working by turning off the layer underneath. Right? So that's my secondary base color at 70% opacity. That's what was underneath it. So that makes a pretty big difference. Just kind of zooming in and modeling it a little bit more. And also notice the difference in how the pixels look, layering up at different opacities from that to that. Whenever I feel like I am using a color a lot, I can put it over here on my palette. So it's easier to select, and I don't lose the purity of it. And you'll start to pay attention to, to the direction of your paint stroke too, as that helps to model the form. Like you're drawing little lines along the, the shape of whatever it is that you're trying to paint, because the direction will help tell the story. You'll start to pay attention to light how this reference is very lit from the, the right side, and then that's spilling around onto the back, onto the side of the ears, even translucent through the ears in certain places. And all it takes is turning off the paint layer behind to see where you haven't touched yet. Ideally, you just kind of fill everything in with your own choice of pixels. Make sure you're painting on the right layer so it's good to lock them as you go. Even if they're locked, you can turn them on and off. But if they're locked, like it just happened, it will keep you from accidentally painting somewhere you don't want to be painting. It's going to happen a lot. So we're moving fast.